Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October Livable Neighborhoods meeting. It is the last one of the year. Um, so we will start back up in January after this one. Um, I it's nice to see all your faces this morning. I was a little worried that everyone would want to stay under the covers and not want to get on today. So it's good to see everybody. I don't think um, Linda Wolford knows that her mic is on. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we get to hear your background. <laughs> Sorry, Linda. Um, just a reminder, if you can mute, please, um, if you're not, um, <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Philbrook, and thank you, Linda, um, and uh, so that we make sure that we can hear all of the speakers. Um, we do have a full agenda today. I believe that that's been sent out to everyone, um, and so we will just jump in in a minute. If you have not, please put your name and organization or neighborhood in the chat. Um, that's kind of taken the place of our interjections that we normally do um, in person. So that way we know who's here and we will go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is Andrea Genero. I'm the director of Livable Neighborhoods for those of you who are new because I do see some new faces today. Um, and welcome, glad to have you all. First on our agenda is David Melhoff with the BPU, who's going to talk about the assistance that they're providing for CARA funding. Um, I think I said that right, David. And you are uh, made co-host, so you can share your screen when you're ready. All right. I'm unmuted. And I'm assuming everyone can see my screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yes. good morning, everybody. David Melhoff. I'm a Chief Communications Officer at BPU and also uh, work, have worked with Andrea for a number of years. Uh, proud to be one of the advisory members of Livable Neighborhoods. Uh, you guys are just do great work. I'll be real brief here. Um, talking about the Kansas Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Uh, the Kansas Emergency Rental Assistance Program, or KIRA, was launched in March of this uh, year. It, it provides rent, utility, internet access to households that have experienced uh, financial hardships due to uh, the COVID-19 pan pandemic. And it's funded uh, federal funds through the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. State of Kansas got about almost $200 million in funding just for this program. And it's administered by the Kansas Housing Resources Corporation. Uh, in Topeka, they administer these funds. Who's eligible for this? You rent your home. Uh, your income didn't exceed 80% of the area's median income. In fact, our Wyandotte County median household income, according to the latest census, is a little over 46,000 a year. Uh, that, that's not, that's, that's the median household income. Uh, it's not the same as um, our, um, um, per capita income, which is, which, is, which, is, which is actually lower than that. Uh, at least one member of the household has to experience documented financial hardship as a result of COVID. Um, they have to be unsure whether or not to become homeless. And it, so a lot of steps had to be met for this. Well, uh, the states who got all this federal money, um, they're not getting it out fast enough. And the federal government says, if you're not gonna use it, uh, we're gonna take it back. So they relax the rules dramatically. So now um, applicants, uh, they can go online or call uh, for all these things they were asking for, household income, COVID hardship, housing instability. Um, all they got to do is just check boxes. They don't have to show documentation anymore because the state needs to get rid of this money, okay? Uh, and so that eases the the renter's documentation burden and shortens the processing time dramatically. What, what does it cover? Up to 12 months of current and past due rent, up to three months of prospective rent at a time, even if the household doesn't have past due charges, and then all past due residential, utility, uh, electric, gas, water, sewer, trash services, and internet costs. And so uh, this thing was launched in March, it's still going on. I think it's gonna go on throughout uh, probably 2022. I do know that in early 2022, the state's gonna launch a similar program for homeowners. So be looking for that. 
Uh, the renter and the landlord have to apply online. Um, if you apply, you're alerted once your application is processed. If approved, that landlord or, or the utility will get the funding directly from the state. Uh, it won't go to the, it wouldn't go to the renter. It would go to the landlord to pay the renter's rent or the, the renter's uh, past due utility bills and so forth. Uh, what happens with EPU if you are applied? A pre-qualified application notice from the state would confirm that your application has been received and it's under review. They should notify BPU customer service as soon as they get this application notice. They can email it in. There's the email address docs at bpu.com. We do get a weekly report on pre-qualified applicants, but we tell people that let us know that they applied. Uh, and then we won't disconnect people that have applied. Once we get their service application, we're not going to disconnect them while this pre-qualification application is being reviewed by the state. Um, we're helping with the process. Uh, my colleague, Patrice Townsend, she spoke to you last month. Uh, she was going to speak today, uh, but uh, she's uh, traveling, so I'm pinch hitting. Um, <clears throat> we've been helping customers submit their applications, uh, particularly at the front end when you had to do all this verifying and documentation which you don't have to do anymore, but we do have some people that do not have access to a computer in their homes. And so what we will do is we'll, we uh, will schedule times to meet with them at the West Wyandotte Library, and we'll sit down with a computer and help them fill it out. And there are people that, and I guess you can try to fill it out by your, from your phone, but it's not as easy. And so if, if somebody needs application assistance, you can call that 573-9123, email us uh, at kira at bpu.com or go to our website and there's uh, connections on there. I know you got a, a really full schedule. Uh, so I wanted to give you a quick look here. The last thing, statewide, 22 applications have been submitted. Um, it shows how many applications are in process, how many households served, over $51 million in funding provided. Wyandotte County, uh, 1,400 applicants have received funds so far, a little over almost $7 million have been paid out. That's either to renters, to the landlords, utility bills, and so forth. Um, and then um, we have right now pre-qualified letters uh, on account. 600 of our customers have been assisted with a little over $400,000 in funds paid on their utility bills. And so, uh, and the remainder of that, um, of the 600, the rest of them, of that 1,100 there, they're, they're in the, somewhere in the process. So I hope I wasn't too confusing. It's just that what in the bottom line is there's a lot of money out there for utility assistance for renters. It's coming down the pipe for homeowners here very soon um, and just have to apply for it. The other thing, if people are looking for other utility assistance, uh, BPU funds it, works with other organizations. I think it's about 12 or 13 in the community. Um, we tell everybody to call United Way 211 because they know at any given time who has funds available. So that's the easy, that way you're not calling all over, okay? Uh, well, maybe El Centro has money this week or maybe they don't, maybe uh, Catholic Charities. Call United Way, they know who's got the bucks. All right, that's it. I want to thank you. If there's any questions, let me know. I see somebody's got a raised hand, Ashley Hand. Go ahead. All right. Well, I just wanted to note that 211 information is really important as part of our immediate needs funding with the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, $1.85 million was distributed to the United Way through, and given to 11 different organizations to provide additional housing assistance. So 211 is a really great resource for that reason. So uh, please help us get the word out. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. That's great. Clayton Hunter has a question. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, hey, Dave, thanks a lot for BPU jumping in and helping people fill out their applications. That that was really nice of you guys. Uh, we had so many family, families try to fill that thing out. It was really rough. We are one of the 10 or 11 nonprofits in Wyandotte County that uh, have funds from the uh, pool of money that was given to United Way and distributed to nonprofits here in KCK. So thanks to everybody at 
the UG and all the commissioners and folks at United Way, we have money to help folks here. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was particularly, you know, when the government puts something together sometimes, uh, they got all this money right away. And, and the day they launched the program in March, their website crashed. So, and then it was so, so much documentation. So I'm glad that now they've relaxed that because they've got to get rid of these dollars. So let's, let's get them out to the people in need. <laughs> Any other questions for me? If not. Dave, it looks like we have a question in the chat from Rachel. Um, how many calls is BPU averaging a day with the hotline? And how many folks have you been able to assist with the application since this program began? Um, well, we have customer service reps and they, um, they take an average of 80 calls a day on anything and everything. So it's really, it's really hard to track. Uh, and, and so people may be calling to make payment arrangements or call to start service or anything like that. Um, as far as customers that we've assisted directly with filling out the applications, I think it's been about 30, something like that, right around that number. Um, haven't been a lot because people were able to be. So I, I think that will, will go less now because they've released it relax the, you know, just check the box. I think what we will maybe help out is people that I don't have access to a computer, so I'll meet you at the library type of thing, right? I think we're gonna set up some times at the KCK um, as well, KCK Community College to help folks fill it out too in their computer lab, but we haven't got that set up yet, okay? Great, thank you. Um, Cedric, did you have a question? Yes, David, is, is there a deadline? No, uh, the deadline, they, they, they have to get rid of these funds. So these funds are still going to, they're going to be available all of this year. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, it sure sounds like, you know, they have, if they paid out 51 million since March and they have right at 200 million, so they got a ways to go yet. So they're going to keep the program until the money's gone. And then there's going to be a new program launched in 2022 for homeowners, different funding. So it'd probably be more funding because there's, you know, more homeowners and renters in some communities. So, um, but it, there's no deadline. Um, it, it for sure, the rest of this year, no doubt about that. It looks like um, Ms. Caldwell shared that EOF also assists with CARE applications and has funding for utility and rental assistance, um, non-COVID related as well as COVID related. And if I missed any other questions in the chat, they were kind of coming through. So if I missed any, uh, feel free to just ask. Andrea, I just had a question for Ms. Hand. Um, she talked about the 11 organizations United Way 211 is a line that goes across the metro wide. And so I wondered if the UG could publish publicly um, who they gave those funds to um, for folks to go directly to organizations to find out the information regarding who has the funds available for community members versus going to 211, which serves a huge population of the region um, when we're talking about nonprofits. So, and it looks like she's in a conversation with someone else. So we can come back to it. Yeah, and we can look at getting those. Um, I think that, and just my experience in the past, if you call 211 and let them know your location, they will only give you the ones listed for your area, not for the metro wide or the, the city as a whole. That's yeah, been Andrea. my personal experience. I don't know if that's been others' experience. So, um. yeah, Andrea. Yes. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Jonathan here, uh, Mr. Melhoff. I have a question. If a person uh, has uh, been approved for the uh, for the care of funds for their uh, say uh, apartment, they're leasing. <clears throat> are they automatically? Uh, approved for the BPU assistance as well, since it's the same funds, or does, he, does that person, does he or she have to apply for uh, the BPU funds and uh, separately from the rental assistance? Um, Mr. Carter, uh, it would be separate. It'd be separate. Okay. So, the, so the CURA funding is one thing, 
and then um, uh, if they want to, you know, for BPU hardship funding or, or or something like that, which is administered to you my way, that's a se separate process. So um, I do know they they kind of take a look at how many Cura funds you got your dollars. They kind of try to spread it out, but it's two separate applications. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Great. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, David. Appreciate your time. If you do have follow up questions, let us know. Um, and Rachel, uh, we will ask Ashley here shortly if the UG has a list of the, um, I know the health department was sharing that earlier, but of the specific agencies in Wyandotte County that have resources available for assistance. Yes, I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And next on the agenda is Jill, and I hope I'm saying this right, Peltzer, um, with KU School of Nursing. And I'm gonna make you co-host so that you can share your screen if you need to. And she is going to speak to us a little bit today about um, some programs around African-American and cancer research. Um, so uh, Jill, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to um, attend your meeting today. Um, so I am a nurse and an associate professor at, at KU School of Nursing. And I work with um, residents in Wyandotte County um, on different projects to advance health equity. One of the projects that we're working on is a community-based participatory research project, which means that we partner with community members um, as equals um, to look at what are pressing questions in the community um, and then strategize on how we want to address those particular issues. So this project is um, a project that's co-led by um, NBC Community Development Corporation with Mr. Broderick Crawford and Groundwork NRG with uh, Ms. Rachel Jefferson. And we have a community advisory board that includes Ms. Elnora Jefferson, who I believe is an active member of Living Neighborhoods. And what we're interested in this particular project is understanding the lived experiences of African Americans who are cancer survivors and co-survivors. So we know that cancer is a serious illness and it affects the entire family. And we want to find out what the experiences are for individuals and their family members when diagnosed with, a cancer, with some form of cancer. We're interested in understanding this among African-Americans living in Wyandotte County because their cancer is um, currently the number one leading cause of death for African-Americans living in Wyandotte County. And compared to um, individuals who are European-American or who are Hispanic, for example, um, there are greater disparities. Um, with regard to cancer. So we are wanting to find out from individuals who have that cancer experience, what the experience has been like from understanding what kind of prevention measures um, have been available, access to screening, um, such as mammograms or colorectal uh, cancer screening, to the, um, what was the experience after the cancer diagnosis and to survivorship. And based on this information, then we will um, work on interventions that are community-based and community-oriented that can help advance health equity for African-Americans that are living in our community. And so to that end, we're wanting to do um, focus groups um, or individual interviews with um, individuals who are survivors of cancer or co-survivors. Um, so that we can gather this information to make um, informed decisions about what are the most important interventions that we could implement um, in our, in Wyandotte County. So we are um, in the process of recruiting individuals to participate in our study. And I'm just gonna share, um, 
my screen really quickly to show you, let me make this bigger. This is our flyer. And I believe that um, Ms. Elnora Jefferson has shared this. Um, and I'm happy to also put this in the chat. So the inclusion criteria for this study is um, African-American at least 18 years old and have had cancer or provided care support to a family member who has had cancer. And we're um, requesting the opportunity to um, speak with individuals either again in an individual interview or in a focus group session that would be about one to one and a half hours. And we are providing, although it's not very much, we are providing a $25 gift card for um, you know, compensation for time and participation in the um, session. And once we're done collecting all of this information, we want to then share the results back with our community um, and would like community input on what would be the best kinds of activities or resources, things that we can um, do that will um, advance health for members of our community. So I think that that was it. It was a pretty informal presentation and just really wanted the opportunity to be able to share about this study and um, see if there would be interest in helping us uh, disseminate the flyers to um, neighborhood groups. And I guess I'll just see if anyone has any questions. Yes, great, thank you. Um, I, I didn't see any in the chat, but Rachel does say thank you, Ashley, for this information. It has been in our e-newsletter and has been in our printed newsletter for livable neighborhoods. And so people can find it there in past, uh, in I think, October's newsletter, as well as the last two Livable Neighborhoods e-newsletters. Um, do we have any other questions? Oh, the library says they would ha be happy to distribute flyers. Um, and then there is a request for someone to send the flyer directly Yes. in the chat. Great, I see that and I am making a note. Um, and I am going to see if I can put the flyer in the chat as well. Oh, great. Uh, Jamie Rodriguez said that uh, that she can have her social work clinic team forward it um, to their clients. So that okay. would be wonderful. Well, thank you again. We really appreciate um, the opportunity. Um, we're really committed to um, advancing health equity um, in Wyandotte County and um, really appreciate the um, assistance on everyone's part here to share information about this uh, project. Great. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. There's two things that I would like to do before we move into our regular updates. One, because I noticed that she's on, would like to welcome a dear old friend. Uh, who's joined us today. LaMonica is on. Hi, LaMonica. <laughs> Good morning, family. <laughs> was happy that she was able to join us today. And then also, because um, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose him at the end, but today is Mr. Cedric Patton's birthday. He is with the Quindaro Urban Renewal Neighborhood. And so if we could all join really quick, this might be a mess, but let's all join really quick and sing Cedric happy birthday. So if you want to unmute, we will do that and sing him happy birthday. Cause I don't want to be singing on my own. Okay. So you guys need to join me. <laughs> oh, Cedric, you poor baby. You're in for it. <laughs> Are we ready? Uh -oh. Okay. Happy birthday. 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 Happy birth
Thank you all. Know. And that wasn't bad. So everybody has a everybody has their own delay system there. So, <laughs> so thank you all. Great. It was that a was nice unique. little harmony. That was <laughs> well, happy birthday. Okay, now we're gonna join in or start our uh regular announcements. Um, so top that announcement, people. Um <laughs> And we are going to start with the mayor's office. I saw Lynn on. Is the mayor joining us? Or no, do you have an update not. for us, Lynn? I have an update for you. First of all, I'd like to say today's National First Responders Day. So we want to thank all of them for the services that they provide our community. And we encourage you all to uh, stop and take some time and say thank you. When you see a first responder on the street, at the store, or whatever, um, they do a lot for us and are thanked not near enough. Uh, next, uh, Dumpster Days kicked off last weekend, and well, kicked off and finished, I guess I should say, and it was a success, and um, they are telling me that they probably will do another one in the spring, so if you have big stuff to get rid of that waste management won't pick up, electronics and stuff like that, if you can, hold on to them, and they're going to look at doing that again in the spring. Um, next, uh, the mayor's office has a new person, and her name's Connie Tao. And she's going to be assist, assisting us as a community liaison. And she's very active in the community. She came here at, in the United States in 1976. Her and her family as refugees and resettled in Wyandotte County in 1980. She graduated from Ward High School and studied at Donnelly College. And as a community liaison, Connie will help coordinate and provide inputs on outreach, communication, and initiatives to underserved community groups including Wyandotte County's large Hmong population. So if you um, have questions for her, or you need to talk to her about anything or like her stop by your community, your neighborhood group or whatever, just give her a call here in the mayor's office. And that's all we have, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, any questions for the mayor's office? Okay, um, next is the health department. And I saw Kay, Kay, are you still on? Yes, I am. I'm, and I'm so sorry, my uh, computer crashed. So I am uh, coming to you from my phone. Uh, so I don't have access to uh, all of um, our notes from our Monday meeting, um, but I can tell you that uh, numbers continue to go down in Wyandotte County. Um, we've kind of plateaued um, and generally speaking, um, we're feeling pretty good uh, about where we are right now. Um, we are uh, down from our uh, high with Delta. Um, I think we're about at 25 new cases uh, per day. Uh, and that, that, that's a significant uh, drop. Um, I also want to let you know that we are uh, planning for our 5 to 11 year olds. Um, we uh, expect to get uh, EUA approval here in the next, uh, our final approval, um, the first of next week. Um, we will uh, need some time to, uh, and we are actively working on a plan for five to 11 year olds. As you, as you all can imagine, um, this age group is, is very different from any other age group we, you know, we've had to deal with um, thus far. 
Uh, vaccinating a five-year-old is very different even than vaccinating a 12-year-old. Um, there is a lot more uh, anxiety, not only be on behalf of the child or not only from the child, but uh, from the parent and sometimes even more so uh, from the parents. So we are working with each of the five school districts individually to find out uh, what their specific uh, school district uh, will need in terms of the, uh, not only um, the service, but in the environment and setting in which they uh, would like to move forward with those uh, uh, vaccinations as, uh, when they're available. We are not a monolithic uh, county. So what works in USD 500 may not work out in Bonner Springs. So, so we are working with each individual superintendent uh, uh, intendant's office separately uh, to make sure that we have a good handle on uh, the needs in that particular uh, district. But we are extremely excited about that. We are uh, already uh, working to uh, make sure that we have uh, uh, pediatric nurses who have specific acumen in working and vaccinating uh, children uh, again, that is going to be very important uh, since uh, some of these kids are so young. We are also looking at uh, what kind of event would be um, appropriate to have at our Kmart location. Uh, as you can imagine, we, we do not want a scenario. Uh, if you've been to our, if you were vaccinated at our Kmart location, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, get in line and at some at, at some points early on it was a bit of a cattle drive uh, and we certainly cannot imagine uh, putting our children through that so uh, what we do at Kmart is going to have to look very different uh, than what we uh, have done in the past. Um, I also want to let you know about a couple of events coming up uh, this Saturday um, we will be at Oak Ridge Missionary Baptist Church, which is at 93rd and Parallel. We will, they are having a fall festival with, um, let me make sure I got this right, nine other churches in the area. So we will be vaccinating at that event from noon to three o'clock this Saturday. Uh, as we always do at these community events, uh, first time, uh, doses will receive uh, either, well, uh, we normally have a, uh, offer a $50 Visa debit uh, gift card if you uh, are receiving your first shot. Uh, for this event, we still are offering that, but you may choose instead uh, a licensed full zip uh, NFL uh, Kansas City Chiefs um, hoodie, uh, if you would prefer to have that as well. I wish they'd won last week. I think that would be a lot more exciting on Saturday, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but that event uh, will be on Saturday. Uh, there will be food there as well. Um, so I hope uh, if, if you know someone that has not pulled the trigger yet on uh, getting vaccinated, maybe this will be uh, an event uh, that uh, they'll want to participate in. Uh, later this month, we will have our last um, USD 500 event uh, for the year. It will be Monday, November 22nd from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, we are going to be at Carl Bruce Middle School. Uh, and that event is also going to have uh, a chief's theme as well. Um, but of course we will be providing uh, our typical uh, $50 debit uh, card. And then in um, December, uh, December 4th, Saturday, December 4th from noon to two at our Kmart location, we are having an event specifically for expectant mothers. Um, this will be at a vaccination event for expectant mothers. Um, we will have uh, OBGYN folks there to speak, uh, our own Julianne 
um, Van Lu uh, with the health our, our uh, health department director. She will be speaking at that event. Um, you all may not know, but uh, Julianne and her husband are expecting their second child in January. And so she uh, will be able to speak to expectant mothers from a personal uh, viewpoint uh, that just the rest of us uh, uh, will not have. So we're hoping that will be uh, a successful event. We'll also have several uh, wraparound clinics available as well. Um, this event, we are going to advertise specifically with our community organizations and our wraparound uh, organizations and uh, clinics because we want to make sure that one, because this is a, uh, an indoor event, we want to make sure that we only have those folks, uh, uh, women there who are expecting. Um, we don't want to, uh, we want to have a large event, assuming, um, you know, uh, they're all expectant mothers, because as you all know, we have experienced um, tragedies with COVID and expectant mothers in Wyandotte County. We have had some expectant mothers die from COVID. So we are extremely uh, worried about this. And, and so we very, very much want to make sure that this particular event is focused on uh, uh, expectant mothers. So that will be Saturday, December 4th, noon uh, to two o'clock PM. Uh, and I'm trying to think, I think that's all uh, I have right now. Uh, but if anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know. Great, thank you. Are there any questions for Kay? Oh, Andrea, I'm sorry. I did want to mention that of the, the ex expectant mothers, uh, that event for fo uh, first doses, we will be providing a $100 visa debit card for that event. Uh, we feel like we're really vaccinating too anyway. So uh, rather than $50, we are going to be offering a $100 uh, gift card at that event. Great, thank you. Any questions? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Kay. Um, you, next on the agenda is the Sheriff's Department. And Sheriff Ash or somebody from your office. Hello, how are you? Hey, Dan, how are you? Good. I don't I don't know that the sheriff's on or anybody else, but um, I probably the only thing I really have is uh, we have a class starting um, the fifth, so next Thursday, and I believe it's four, um, which we you know we'll take at this point. Um, we'd love to have some more. So I know we've talked before uh, with with everybody in the group. If you have anybody, uh, neighbors, friends, um, anybody that you know that would like to come and, and apply, we'd love to we'd love to have them. So send them our way. But other than that, we're trucking along. Great, thank you. Any questions for the Sheriff's Department? Okay. Thanks. Moving right along, thank you. Uh, DA's office, and I knew Jonathan was on. Good morning, I am not Jonathan Carter. <laughs> I am Damon Mitchell, but I have Jonathan Carter's link somehow. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm going to move on ahead. Uh, okay, great. Deal. Um, not a, not a bunch from the uh, DA's office. I will uh, echo uh, uh, what uh, the sheriff's um, department uh, is speaking about, and frankly, that is uh, staffing shortages. Uh, I think it's true across the UG. Um, and, and we're doing everything that we can uh, to try to uh, get uh, applicants in and retain people, uh, but it's tough. So to the extent you know anybody that needs a job, uh, we are doing uh, increasingly more uh, with less staffing. Uh, they're working hard and getting the job done, but uh, that is something that uh, is uh, um, at a very, very uh, critical uh, point, quite frankly. 
Uh, but at any rate, uh, we're, we're plugging along. We had some um, uh, uh, high school students in uh, just the other day uh, for um, with what is essentially a career day. Uh, and so uh, that went really well uh, in conjunction with the KCK Public Schools. Uh, and so again, uh, we're continuing the mission. Uh, and um, if you know anybody that needs a job, we've got openings. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any questions for the DA's office? Okay. Any attorneys out there, go and apply. <laughs> okay, next on our agenda is the KCK PD. Hey, uh, my name is Joe Grisola. I just took over a week and a half, two weeks ago as our uh, commander of the community policing unit. Uh, Captain Pruitt was promoted to major and she's, she's my boss. She's over our community support division, but I've... Uh, started this new position, so I'm learning a lot. Uh, a little bit about myself, I've been on the police department. I'm in my 14th year and uh, done a lot of time in our patrol divisions in our uh, South Patrol Midtown, and then I did some time in our East and West as well. Um, my previous assignment was at South Patrol, and before that I was our internal affairs commander for about just under three years. Um, we've got uh, some things going on. Obviously, we just had our big NASCAR races last weekend, which both my traffic and community policing units were uh, big in helping with all the uh, ingress and egress from the stadium. We thought it went overall pretty well. Um, our community policing unit uh, is still doing a lot with our homeless outreach and our city ID program, trying to um, get resources to people that are experiencing homeless right now, which uh, we're seeing more and more in our city now. Uh, so we've been doing a lot with that and having some good luck. Um, it's obviously a work in progress and any issues or areas where you're aware of homeless populations um, showing up, please uh, let us know. I'll put my email address in here in the chat and uh, we can have uh, members of our department and our homeless outreach team make contact with them and start uh, trying to work towards getting them resources and help. Uh, we got a big trunk or treat event going on this uh, Friday. Um, so tomorrow from about 5.30 to 7.30 and uh, that strip mall there at about 66th and Parallel Parkway. Um, basically, if uh, you have any kids or anything that you're aware of that would like to come, uh, family bring them. Uh, they are requesting that people wear masks and socially distance. Um, but, you know, with Halloween costumes, that'll be appropriate anyway. And then we're also getting ready to support the big uh, Day of the Dead um, event and parade and everything happening on the 6th. So we'll probably be out there with that. And we'll have uh, our police athletic league supporting that with the uh, low rider car show that they're gonna be having out there. Uh, kind of like uh, Colonel Soptic was saying, we also are starting an academy class. It'll be uh, middle to end of November. And then I think we're also anticipating on trying to start another one in January. So we've got those going on. And uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely trying to get people to apply as well. So if you have anybody has interest in uh, becoming a police officer here in Kansas City, Kansas, uh, please get them in touch with us. We'd love to talk to them and uh, increase our numbers as well. So if anybody has any questions, please let me know. And then I'll put my email in there uh, in the chat if you guys have anything later on or uh, any of those things that I brought up that you want to reach out to me about. Do we have any questions? Thank you. Any questions? And I saw, and I hope this is right, Lieutenant Colonel Anderson was on. Yeah, I think Joe kind of jumped the gun. He gave the community policing update first, but that's <laughs> fine. Um, so we have had some changes at the police department and Joe was um, recently moved as the commander of community policing. And uh, the reason for that was, um, Captain Pruitt was promoted to major. So now she will be over the um, community service support, which community policing falls under as well as the traffic. So she'll still be involved with that, with that area. Um, some other notable moves, obviously, we've promoted a deputy chief and uh, deputy chief Kelly Heron was promoted on October 6th and he's over our services bureau. And uh, Colonel Waldeck is currently over our investigations, who was my predecessor in the Operations Bureau. 
Um, we also promoted two majors. Uh, William Wallace is now the commander of South Patrol. If you guys um, haven't met him yet, I would encourage you to go down to meet him. And then uh, uh, Major George Sims is taking over uh, East Patrol. So we also promoted four captains and four sergeants on October 5th. So that seems to be uh, all of our promotions. Um, so you might be seeing some new faces in different positions because we had to kind of move some people around. Um, like Joe said, uh, November 16th, we're starting an academy class of 16. Um, we have currently nine in the academy now and they graduate uh, December 2nd, and that's going to be on Facebook Live if anyone interested in, in watching that. Um, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, we have the academy class in January, and we currently have four recruits getting ready to start then. Um, and I believe um, that's all I have. But if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Great, thank you. Any questions? Okay, um, next we have the fire department. And I know that John is on. Hi there, can you hear me this time? <laughs> yes. Okay, all right, good morning. Uh, I'll try and make it brief. Uh, the residential open burn season is about halfway through. As of this morning, looks like about 350 permits have been processed. A uh, reminder that is for residential properties only. So agricultural, commercial properties need to go through the air quality office if they're trying to apply for a permit um, outside of that. Um, at this time, we are processing 14 applicants um, to hire a uh, plan start date in mid-January. We actually have 20 open positions, but right now we've only been able to pick up 14 applicants. It's for paramedics only. Uh, the entire metro area is pretty short on paramedics and we're all uh, competing for them. Um, one thing of note, and I'll probably bring this person to one of the early meetings next year, the fire department has started up a community paramedic program. Uh, Vibrant Health received a grant for 18 months to uh, pair up one of their nurses with one of our paramedics and go around to patients we've identified in the system that we visit um, 15, 20 times a year and transport them because they're not uh, maintaining their health very well. Um, so it's been started up in many cities across the United States. It's extremely successful. We're hoping that after the 18 month grant that uh, it'll be um, continued on by the local health uh, consortium in the uh, area because it does save the hospitals a considerable amount of money when you don't have to constantly return a patient back to their emergency room or their ICU. So you might see a white Equinox. It's got some lettering on it from the fire department and I think it's gonna have vibrant care put on it, but they don't run emergency calls. They're strictly home visits to assist those people that are having issues. But I'll bring, it just started up about a week and a half ago. So sometime after the first year, we might have some pretty good stats for you and some questions that uh, the paramedic we've assigned to that is doing. Um, other than that, uh, I know this is the last meeting, so I'll, I'll be sending uh, Andrea some PSAs on cold weather safety, you know, the space heaters that are, people are gonna start firing up here because it's getting cold out. Um, and one thing I've seen already, uh, make sure you check the tires on your car. It's gotten cold, so they've shrunk. I'm seeing a lot of cars that have bulging tires on them because the pressure are low and you'll heat those sidewalls up driving on them and blow them out and won't be able to fix them. So make sure you're checking your air pressure now that it's gotten cold out. Other than that, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send them to me and I'll take care of them. Great, thank you. Any questions? For the fire department. Oh, I see Paul has his hand up. Uh, John, how do the how do the people apply for this uh, uh, paramedic program uh, or in home program? The community paramedicine uh, visit. 
That's the one you're talking about? Right. So our, um, our Q&A uh, person that goes over all the, all the reports, we have a person dedicated going over all the reports of all the transports we do, which is in the neighborhood of 27,000 a year. They identify the ones that um, we visit very frequently. Um, there's, a, there's a list they go through. And then they send that to this nurse and paramedic and staff, this car, and they go uh, visit them, make sure that they have the food that they need, the resources they need, make sure they're taking their medicine, do a health checkup on them. They have all the equipment to do uh, blood tests, uh, cardiac tests, things like that. But it's not anything you can call and put yourself on a list for. We're identifying that. So, so let me give you an example of how it works to save money. KU looked into this a few years ago before COVID hit. Um, when we transport a patient to, the, to a hospital and they are on Medicaid or Medicare, um, say that somebody has got COPD, some breathing problems, we get them there, they end up getting admitted to the ICU for a couple months, finally get weaned off, get sent home. If they return back to the hospital, Within 30 days, Medicaid and Medicare will not pay for that next hospital visit. Um, so an ICU stay could be $100,000, $200,000 over a week. So they're losing out. So we're trying to prevent these patients from going back to the emergency room because they have not taken care of themselves um, within the 30-day period, hopefully ever. But if we can avoid that 30-day return trip back to the hospital, uh, it saves the hospital millions of dollars. And so we're hoping that this 18 month trial will show that, and then they will be willing to fund that from here on out. Maybe we can have two cars of that. I don't know. Maybe we can reduce the ambulances down. Uh, the fire department has to staff because of the run volume. I don't know, but that's what this 18 month grant is all about. Thank you. Right, thank you. It looks like we have a question in the chat, and I and I know that that you will be determining based on the calls for service who receives this program, but will that include calls to um, our community's houseless populations, or is it specifically homes? It's specifically those in, in the home. It's not. So I see where they're asking about the mental health crisis. No, because the nurse is not and paramedic are not specialized in um, mental health care. Uh, they would have to go to a hospital to be evaluated by a psychologist for their, for their um, condition. So if this is stuff that we can take care of out in the field and not have to take them to a physician's office or an emergency room to prevent that. Great, thank you. It sounds like a really interesting program. I'm excited to see what, it's, what happens it's with it. Starting up everywhere in the United States and it's been successful basically everywhere it's been tried. So we're kind of in the middle, I guess, of doing this, but hopefully it works out the way we predict it will. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Um, we did have one question, John. Um, who can they contact at the fire department to present information on this? To? Yeah, is there anyone at the fire department that they can contact to maybe get more information presented so at their I organization? Will, I will have um, our public, one of our public information officers uh, see if we can generate something. I'll get it to you, Andrea. I guess is probably your kind of a central repository for that. Okay. Um, I don't. It, it's so new. Like I said, it just started two weeks ago, and they actually started making their first trips this past week. So um, it's in its infancy stage. It'll ramp up pretty quick here in the next few weeks. But we will get some information out. But like I said, it's not. As far as I know, it's not anything that anybody can ask for and apply for. It's it's because it has to be follow the guidelines of the grant. We're going through identifying these patients. Um, physicians, I guess, at the local hospitals are identifying them, going, hey, can you go check on this? Um, we've seen them, you know, 13 times this year already, and 
we need to prevent this. So, but I will get you some kind of a cut sheet on that that you can distribute. Uh, this this is Jamie, and I'm the one who would ask the question. And and I'm with the program of all inclusive care for the elderly mm -hmm. here in Wyandotte County. So I would like to to kind of work with you all hand in hand because a lot of those individuals you're seeing and that are going, going to be kind of flagged are individuals that would benefit from PACE and would be able to prevent a lot of those those ER follow-ups and those, you know, multiple ER visits and multiple 911 calls if they were on this program. And so that's why I, if there's a way to kind of meet with you or somebody on your team to kind of discuss this and, you know, refer those individuals in Wyandotte County to the program that are 55 and over, you know, that would be just kind of an extra benefit. Okay, so I'll provide my email in the chat okay. tank and you can reach out to me and I will put you in contact with um, our person assigned to the fire department that's a part of that program. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Great, thank you both so much. Great way to expand services, <laughs> make them more available. Okay, um, thank you, John, I appreciate that. Uh, I see that Greg Talkin is now on uh, with the NRC. And Greg, do you have an update for us? Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Good morning, everybody. And sorry, I had to join late. I had a conflict this morning. Um, my theme is kind of along the themes of most people that, have, that I've heard speak since I got on and dealing with staffing levels. Um, on somewhat of a positive note, all of our staffing positions in the NRC have been approved with the exception of Andrea's position. And we're still working on that. We hope to eventually get that cut loose. Um, we have, uh, I think, a total of eight positions we've been working on. Uh, we have recently seen an uptick in applications, which is a good sign because we were getting no applications for a number of our positions for a while. So I know um, a lot of you may be hearing that, uh, you know, some confusion on the code enforcement property maintenance side because we've had to reassign a number of inspectors to old cases where we've had staff uh, either retire or leave the organization. So we're working to get those filled. And as we get those filled in the property maintenance side, we've been trying to kick off our uh, one of our new initiatives, the problem property team. I've spoke about that a little bit in the past, um, but that's we're currently getting that underway. Um, that is being led by Erin Downing, who was our demo coordinator. Um, she still is holding that role, but with the decrease in demolitions, she had a little time on her hands and energy and she wanted to take this this on. So she is leading a team of four uh, in that effort uh, to try to uh, tackle some of those bigger problem properties that we deal with day in and day out. So uh, once again, we're, we're just trying to get those positions filled, uh, trying to move those forward the best we can to get back to um, being efficient with, uh, with our services. Um, the only other thing I would note, and hopefully John Droppelman's still on here because he's probably wondering every day why we haven't moved the new code adoption forward. Uh, we stumbled a little bit with uh, some uh, comments we received from some energy code groups. Um, I think we've worked through most of those now. I'm hoping to move that forward here to standing committee here very soon um, uh, to get that, uh, get that moving forward. So that's all I really have today and thank you. Great, any questions for Greg? Okay, thank you, Greg. And Edwin, USD 500, what do you have for us today? Thank you, Andrea, and good morning, everyone. I just have a couple of uh, um, announcements. Am I still muted? Can you hear me? We can, we hear, can you. hear you. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Dr. Stubblefield will be wrapping up her listening and learning tour, and uh, she has two more of those meetings with parents, and that will be this Saturday at uh, from 11 to 12 at Schlegel, and there will be one Sunday at the International Pentecost uh, Church, uh, African Church, and that's going to be from 1 to 2 o'clock. So she's going to wrap that up. We're going to have some more next year, but I would like for you all who are here, I'm going to put in the chat. There's a survey that she's asking residents and parents and to contribute to six question survey. 
just what you think about the district, what we're doing well, what we could do better. And uh, if you want to contribute and uh, answer some of those questions, we would appreciate it. Um, she is very open to listening and learning before we chart the course to uh, make some changes and improvements and, and uh, continue doing what we're doing. Also, I wanna mention that I wanna give a quick shout out to the um, DA's office, Jonathan is on here and the, the mayor's office, David Alvey and the Unified Government for hosting our students for the Real World Learning Day. So we had a number of our students to go out and job shadow with different and uh, various jobs. Also, Ashley, I wanna thank her and her staff for what they did to try to accommodate us. It's, this was our first time doing this and having conversations with Ashley, this is something that we wanna partner more so in the future, getting our students out there and connecting with various organizations and jobs that are available out here. Um, one of the things that I wanna say is that we all know that many of our students have been uh, out of the classroom for more than a year and they haven't been in person. Many of our students are still trying to um, acclimate to being back in person and in education, we're realizing that even a year, a little bit more than a year, has been challenging for a lot of our young people. So when you see um, some of the young folks, ask them how they're doing, how school's going, how their classwork is going, uh, those questions just to continue to encourage them to uh, stay focused and uh, study and uh, get those grades up. So uh, just something just to think about. Some of you probably are already doing that, but you know, if you can reach out and just talk to the kids and uh, remind them how important it is to stay focused and to do the best that they can in school. That is all that I have, Andrea. And uh, again, I wanna thank everybody for their support for the Real World Learning Day. That's it. Great, thank you, Edwin. Does anybody have any questions for Edwin? Okay, a lot of great information today. Um, and David, I have BPU on our agenda. Did you have anything else to add? Uh, all I have is one quick thing because I used up a lot of time earlier. That is, uh, some of you may have already received it. Some of you will be getting it, the new BPU bill. I'm, I don't wanna promote a bill because everybody loves bills, but uh, this is a new billing statement where it has uh, graphics on it, shows your history of your electric usage history and water usage history. Uh, it will have a, a summary on the first page, explanations of all the charges on the second. Uh, and then the next page will talk about your, uh, your usage. And then another separate page will just break down and show separately the different UV charges. You know, we're the bill collector for the unified government. Uh, so we, we uh, uh, pass through those charges, uh, whether at the uh, the pilot uh, trash, um, stormwater, and and uh, wastewater. So be looking for that, and uh, it's just great to be around this group. I look forward to we can all be in person. Thank you. I keep forgetting to unmute. Any questions about the new bill? Okay, great. Um, now I'm just going to open it up for community announcements. So um, do we have any community announcements? Nobody's doing anything. <laughs> oh, Linda, okay. Linda has an announcement. <laughs> okay. Um, just so y'all know tonight, uh, if you need something scary to do or not so scary, um, Will Stuck is going to be performing online. Uh, uh, via Zoom, he's doing his not so scary story time. You can get online at kckpl.org and sign up and get the link sent to you and enjoy a not too scary story time this evening uh, with your kids. It's at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, so this is, I have something that's called <laughs> vote. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, please vote everybody. You know, uh, if you haven't voted yet, vote. And um, then, yeah, thanks, Linda. And so are we, I'm here, I'm getting a lot of back. Uh, there we go. Um, so 
can vote at the election office. Am I breaking up or what's going on? Yeah, I think I think it's coming from you. Is it? Is it coming from me now? Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't think it was coming from me. But anyway, so the election office, go down there and vote between 10 and 4. And you can vote, you know, on Saturday as well. So no complaining. You can get out. You won't be on work, I hope. Uh, I will be, but hey, such is life. And then down at Argentine Center and at Eisenhower Center and or on the second, it's your location. So it's important to vote. And I know sometimes we have poor turnouts on non-national non elections, but we're Wyandotte County. We got to show our strength and get out there and vote. So thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I did see that uh, Jamie had said everyone's hiring. So just general blanket statement, everyone is hiring. <laughs> So if you know anybody who needs a job. <laughs> we have a um, lot of positions. Yes, we're hiring. Yeah, a lot of positions everywhere. And then Commissioner Bynum also posted in the chat that um, she had to jump off, but she wanted everybody to know that the commission will have a special session tonight at 5 p.m. on the American Recovery the ARPA funds. Um, <laughs> so um, that should be tonight at five o'clock and you should be able to find that information about that meeting on the UG website. Um, if you want more information, you can reach out to me and I can get try to get you the uh, specifics. Um, Andrea. Yes. It's Pam. Pam yes. Dad, and I'm shameless. Shepherd Center is doing its annual nut sale. And if anybody's interested, they can call me at 913-371-1092, and I'll be sure they get a, a order form. Great. Thank you. And we did share that in our e-newsletter, yeah. and I can reshare it again, the information for that, um, if you would like more information about the Shepherd Center Nut Sale. And I also believe that for your 35th anniversary celebration, you are doing a raffle for a quilt as yes. well. Yes. Um, so if anybody wants more information about that, the Shepherd Center of KCK, um, their website, or you can contact me and I can get you more information about that. Um, any other updates from the community? Oh, oh Miss King, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, the Turco Community Association, we've been busy the last, uh, well, since um, the latter part of summer, we've planted around 18 trees on 6th and Washington Boulevard, and it's looking really nice. It's going to be a beautification pocket park. So if you are in that area, please pass by and look at what we're doing. We're helping the environment. We're making it pretty. So when you wake up in the morning and want to walk, you have something really nice to look at um we've also installed three solar lights uh, for to brighten up the area and it's really gonna look nice and we haven't finished uh work yet and next year our project is to install some benches and sidewalk and it's gonna really be nice also um the uh, Roundworks NRG has been helping us a great deal. Their uh, particip participation has been off the top. Uh, they've helped with everything with manual labor and recruiting kids from Sumner Academy to, to assess, assist, and, and help out and get involved with the community. Also, uh, Groundworks with Donna Guerra, she has started a walking program for um, health benefits for the community. So we walk on Wednesdays uh, starting at 5.15 at uh, 7th and Walker, right behind the, um, I don't know what it is, it's a red brick building and it's an industrial uh, concrete or rock company. I don't know the name of the sign, it's not on the outside, but it's right by the park on 7th and Walker. So if you get a chance on Wednesdays, if the weather permits, you know, come take a walk on the Jersey Creek Shell, and it's really quite pleasant. Jersey Creek is really a nice walk where there have been so many improvements. 
and there more there's more that's needed but for right now it's it's quite adequate and it's, it's very nice and that's it so i wanted to share wonderful and if you share some of the pictures of your new pop pocket park i'll make it one of the neighborhood spotlights so if you send me some pictures from your new um trees being planted we'll make it thank spotlight. you <laughs> wonderful and i see edgar's hands up well, also I want to add, um, we have our orchard. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to see everybody here. Uh, I made the last one. It's been so, <laughs> so crazy. Uh, we are very busy. We're very busy organizing or only event that we were able to produce. And we're trying to do the best we can to keep it uh, fun and yet safe for our community. Um, this time we're talking about the production of Day of the Dead celebration. This celebration uh, was canceled last year. And obviously uh, we are very eager to, to produce something and bring the community together. Uh, this time is going to be in uh, November 6th. Uh, vending, uh, food vending and all is going to start at uh, noon and go all the way until the end of the parade, which should be around 8 p.m. Uh, the parade itself starts at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, the lineup will go from 6th Street and Central to all the way to 16th Street and then uh, move uh, from, from there. Everybody gets to go home or come back to the party, I don't know. Uh, we are going to have uh, only six vendors per block uh, to, to give them more space in between and give more space for two people, uh, for people to line up and, and uh, you know, have more distance. We're asking people to bring uh, masks and, and with all the face painting and all that, that shouldn't be a challenge. But um, we're going all the way uh, to 10th Street with the festival, with celebration. So from 10th Street to 15th Street, uh, last time we did it, uh, we had people all throughout. Uh, we don't know how many uh, people we're going to get, how many visitors. Uh, last time we did it, we had on over 20 hits in social media, uh, 20,000 hits in social media. This time we have 5,000. So we, we think it's going to be fun. There is going to be space and, and we can uh, enjoy the, the, the evening and the nighttime parade. Uh, everybody's welcome. Uh, we have new t-shirts. We have lots of good food, uh, live music. Please uh, come, stay, keep the distance and enjoy yourselves. Wonderful, thank you. Can I say your flyers are beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We, we try. We try. <laughs> um, I, I do notice that Pat's hand is up, but uh, Nancy McNeely uh, shared that local workforce centers for Windout, Johnson, and Leavenworth counties has several positions open. Please contact the workforce centers. She left the numbers there, and I've asked her to send me some info to share with you all, too, outside. Um, and Pat, I noticed your hand's up. Yes, thank you, Andrea. I'm going to take this opportunity to speak in my role as a trustee of the community college. I'm sure everyone's heard something about our downtown project. I'm here to offer myself, and I put my email in the chat, um, if your community group, your neighborhood group, wants to hear more about this project or has questions about this project, please contact me. We'll do outreach. We'll come and visit with you. We want this to be what the community needs for it to be. We, we have a plan. We have wraparound services. We're going to have health care, mental health care, the Y, the college. It's going to be quite an adventure to put this in the downtown area, but I want to make sure the community has a voice in telling those of us at the college what they want and what they need. So if you'd like, and I know neighborhood groups are always looking for programs. If, if you need a program speaker, give me a holler 
And if you just have questions, drop me a note. Thanks, Andrea. Great, thank you. Okay, any other announcements or questions? Okay, well, thank you everyone. Um, keep an eye out. We will have a celebration to celebrate the amazing work of our neighborhood leaders over this past year. Um, and so that should be coming out in December. I hope to get out something soon. A few of us at the beginning of this call had talked about maybe having a little bit of a uh, livable neighborhoods has talent. So uh, we might throw in some talent there. If you have a special talent you would like to share that is appropriate for a group, um, <laughs> please let us know, please let me know. And um, we can maybe put together a little talent show for fun. Um, so yeah, or if you know anyone in your neighborhood or your organization that would like to do that, let us know. Also neighborhood leaders, you'll be getting some information. I'll be asking for photos, um, videos, um, little stories or anything that you would like to share um, to put together. Um, and Ashley's not on anymore, but she did say she'd help me. We're gonna try to put together a little video for you um, just to kind of highlight the work that you've done and the things that you've done over the year. And um, we'll have a little event where we can thank you appropriately. So um, just keep an eye out for those things. And everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. And uh, when we don't see you, we'll see you at the end of the year for the celebration, but then back for this meeting in January. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Andrea. Have a good one. Bye, Andrea, you too. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. This is Christine Allen from Citizen Among the Stars. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Hi, Miss Allen. How you doing? I wanted Hi. to say thank you for all of those who sent cards since uh, the incidents that has happened uh, for me that kept me away from you guys. Uh, it was not the uh, COVA at all. It was some things that happened that caused illnesses and uh, deaths in our family. But thank you all so much for the support that you gave us. And I would like to say that Citizen um, Among the Stars group is back. And if any of us uh, can be of any assistance to you all, please let us know. And I thank you so much for listening. And you all have a blessed day. You too. Thank you.